welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. My co-host Bricky is back. He's back from having all of the illness. But before he starts telling us about the wacky world of Warhammer 40k, if you enjoyed today's episode, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous and consider supporting us. You get access to our Discord, bloopers if they happen. The $15 tier gets you all of our digital HD posters. Speaking of which, Pricky, we have a new poster. Would you like to see... Oh, no. A, a new, new one? Yeah! I've got a preview image for you that is just... Oh, I think it Lord. is peak. So, you say, wait, I'm sorry. You say preview image like it's not done yet? or Oh, it's, it's, it's done. Oh. Check this out, my guy. Look at that. All right. This is not as bad as I thought it would be. Yes, it is. It is Lady Skull Crusher, a very... Very toned, uh, corn. I guess that's technically a demonette because it's a female demon, right? And she incorrect. That... A demonette is a slanesh. Yeah, thing. but like a female demon would be a demonette because it's. I don't know how. It that... would be a blood. It would be a blood um, letter, technically. Oh, okay. Well, it's a and blood letter, and that blood I... letter. I barely knew her. Ha. And and Shy went with Lady Skull Crusher for the title because she didn't want to go with my initial take of uh, "Crush Me, Mommy, Uwu. So okay, it's called well, Lady Skull Crusher. All right, that champ. That's really interesting. Next time, <laughs> keep it to yourself. <laughs> I mean, I thought that was a pretty good title, but Shy was like, "No, nah, it's not exactly. Uh, whatever." Just... Well, also, a Skull Crusher is actually a unit that you can field on the game. Well, okay. Actually, actually, I think it's called Skull. I was just skull. going with the fact that she was crushing a skull and it's corn. Yeah, blood crushers. Blood crushers are actually a unit that you can use. I mm. believe it's like it's like a like a demon on like a like a big dog thing. It's fine. This is so much better than I thought it would be. I'm on board with this one. Hell I, yeah. I, I was I was so worried. I was so worried. I was I was terrified. Oh dear, but no, we're it's it's perfect. It's lovely. Look you know, you know abs what? And those thighs. Ugh. We'll we'll get it. We'll get it on the merch store post haste. Mm, hell yeah! Let's we'll go. Get, we will get it on there immediately. Hey, Bricky, you said you'll get it on the merch store. Where could our lovely viewers buy said merch if they wanted to? <sighs> What an excellent thing. Well, we you can buy our merch at Orchidate.com that we actually have a new Twitter account for as well. If you want to keep up oh. to date with all the new stuff at Orchidage 8 shop on Twitter. And uh, yes, you can get that. You can get the, the Snakey Snake Fulgrim poster as well. And our brand new Adeptus Ridiculous flag that many of our fans have been hanging up on the wall. That flag looks so cool. Oh my god, that turned out so good. I've seen a couple pictures of it. Oh, it looks great. The uh, it, it's it's a uh, it's a fun time. I've been liking people seeing it, and and now we have a giant skull crushing abbed up, booba corn deal. All's good. Oh, she's all's great. good. Look at those those abs. Those look at those thighs. quads. Yeah, and and you've even got some classy under boob. Huh? Hell yeah, classy. Wonderful. Um, book club uh, should be soon, right? We, we've we got uh, Belisar's Call, the great work. Should be soon-ish? Yes, soon-ish. Okay. Uh, honestly, just it'll come out when it comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we'll, we've had some we'll, setbacks that were unforeseen. So it's, it's we haven't forgotten. We'll do mm -hmm. it. We'll do it. So, uh, I, I, I'm back. Yay. Welcome back. Um, Thank you. I um so I, I originally had all my issues, my throat, and then COVID. I, I think COVID is being like the great equalizer <laughs> because my throat got better because of COVID, huh. and I think it may have just killed whatever was messing with my throat. Uh, like I mean, could be sure. Like this town's not big enough for the two of us, so I don't think I have to worry about my tonsils anymore. Um, well, I mean, that's well, you're missing out on getting all that ice cream though. Oh, because of the... Yeah, uh, oh, once you, you get your tonsils eat. taken out, you just uh, have a steady yeah, yeah. diet of ice cream. Uh, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably have to eat, like, green Jamba Juice or something. 
But um, but in the, this beginning of this episode, you know, Shy isn't here right now. Uh, she's <laughs> she's got some real life stuff, so yeah. that means she's under the will of me. All right, DK, let's talk about female space. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the actual mm -hmm. thing we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Phoenix that... Lords, right? I know. I huh? Don't have to quote me. It's Phoenix Lords, isn't it? This time, I got it. This time, I know. This time, mm, this is mm, mm, no fake news here, I hope. Right. It, Did it, you switch it, it up on me again? No, no, it's Phoenix Lords. Oh, it's, it's, it's geez, Phoenix I was Lords. really worried that all of that bolster was going to get shot down immediately, and you were going to be like, no, the, neck, the, the Angron book, idiot. And I was like, no! Anywho, mm. um, so yes, Phoenix Lords today, uh, which is basically going to be like three to four Phoenix Lords and and then the rest like small excerpts. And that's basically what it's going to be okay. because um, it really the lore for the Phoenix Lords comes down to mainly two of them and okay. then some nice spatterings in the rest. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. As long as we cover Maugen Ra, I'll be... Uh, completely satisfied. Okay, well, we we will cover Malgan Ra. You might not be as happy with with the amount of lore Malgan Ra has, but oh. um, it's 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 fine. So, uh, Phoenix Lords, we did talk about the wonderful world of the Aspect Warriors and the Aspect Warrior shrines in the past. Mm -hmm. um, that, and to to reiterate that, it is the the classic case of all right, there is a shrine and it's like a it's a temple. And the mm -hmm. temples are dedicated to the various paths of the warrior, and said paths of the warrior have the uh, the troops in them, like howling banshees and stuff. And they have exarchs, which are the leaders, and then they have the phoenix lord, which is the founder and the leader leader leader, the ultimate leader, the CEO of death. Yep, as that they is say. an aspect of these warriors that we covered. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the main one, if we're going to talk Phoenix Lords, we're really going to talk mainly about one guy. Not mainly, but, like, he's kind of the guy. And that's Azerman. Azerman is the guy. He is the guy. Yeah, we, we covered him in the uh, Aspect Warriors episode a little bit, right? He had the... Oh, shoot, what did he have? He had, he had really distinct armor. He had did the he big yin the... and yang on the set. Yeah, I was about to say, did he have the big yin, yin and yang? Okay, gotcha. Now I remember what he looks like. And the, the big flag on his back. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, the, the samurai flag. Yeah, yeah. So Azerman is the guy. Uh, his name originally was... Oh, Eldar names. Oh, Eliathan? Uh, yeah, sure, that sounds good. That sounds I'm close. Sure. I'm trying. Yeah. Um, so these... Uh, Azerman is one of the few people that are still alive, I guess you could call that still alive, because they're like this weird gestalt consciousness of armor, you know? So, like, oh. whether you'd really call it, like, alive is is undetermined. So, so his consciousness is, like, in the... Is that one of those things where if you wear the armor, you kind of sort of become one with the founder? Right. So, so, so Aspect Warriors are basically that. Yeah, the aspect warriors are basically a, a, a hollowed out piece of armor that um, you kind of like the souls of the prior exarchs and aspect warriors that kind of inhabited the armor kind of take your soul and mm -hmm. and you become the next one. Uh, so it's like you're always Azerman, but there have been like twenty Azermans yeah. in a sense, but you're always Azerman or Jane Zar, or Baharoth, or etc. So the armor is kind of like their pseudo soul stone. Not really, but kind of, sort of. Yeah, I mean, it kind of, sort of. Yeah, it's it's a bunch. It, I believe the armor is kind of thousand sunsy, where there's like not something in there, and it's just mm. like armor that is just being animated by the souls. Though I don't remember if that's entirely true because in the Night Lord's book, did Jane Czar like was she like bleeding and fleshy? I don't remember. Oh. Or was she just blown up? I don't remember if that was the case or not. I mean, I do remember her being blown up, but I it's been so long since I've read that. I feel like she was, like, bleeding and fleshy, and she did get stomped, but I don't... Yeah, She, don't she did get squished, that is true. She did get squishied, yeah. Like, I don't remember if it was just, like, crunch the armor or, like, crunch splat. Uh, but anyway, yeah. uh, so Same Azerman, happens. Azerman the Phoenix Lord Man. Um, so Azerman, way back when, 
was was alive before the fall of the Eldar. Okay, like, so he's an old boy. He is an old boy. Even I mean, by Phoenix Eldar Lords are he's old. Yeah, like Phoenix Lords are basically immortal anyway because they're mm. weird Gestalt suits of armor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he Azerman started old. What a boomer. He's a he's is ultra probably boomer. the ultra boomer. Yes, he is as <laughs> boomer as they come. Now it's like if a Civil War person was alive today. <laughs> okay, boomer said to the man who fought for like, <laughs> well, he could have fought for the South. It's true. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, well, the Azerman Azur did not fight for the South. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, now Slanesh they're back then. Slanesh fought for the South. Slanesh fought. Yeah, Slanesh has a giant Confederate flag. That's why we hate her. <laughs> <laughs> or him, it, whatever. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so uh, he lived generally a pretty uneventful life. It was uneventful and rather boring. Oh. Um, Ezerman's life was pretty just whatever. Okay. Uh, and before the fall, there were all those Eg Eldar Exodites that kept on yelling out those prophecies of doom for the Eldar Empire, and we got to get out of here. They were the the Eldar that rode dinosaurs and stuff, the old Exodite yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Now... Um, Azerman, also known as Il Ilith, uh, uh, had a brother named Tethesis. Uh, it's, it's literally Thesis, but with a T-E in front of it, so I'm going to call him Tethesis. Okay, Tethesis, uh, sure. Tethesis. He had originally desired to join the uh, Exodites as well in their little exile from the Empire of the Eldar. Uh, but, you know, his um, little more skeptical sibling, a.k.a. Azerman, refused to leave the planet. Uh, once the fall of the Eldar happened, Slanesh birthed and everything, um, they both of them survived the major calamity. Um, I don't know really how, but they they did. You know, they just weren't affected by, in that area or something. Um, Fantasy. But then we we need these important people to survive. So hey, they did. They were yeah special. I, yeah, I mean, like not every single Eldar died in the birth of Slanesh, but it was just like a catastrophic event. You yeah, know, a lot of and them I, did though. <laughs> I, I imagine the birth of Slanesh would be like. Like all out nuclear war. Oh yeah, yeah. Where like people some people will live, but like goddamn, not many. Yeah, those people that bought those doomsday bunkers are like, ha! See? I survived Slanesh. <laughs> the government are all Nazis. Well yeah, <laughs> now, but not then. Not then. That's a great line. <laughs> uh any anywho, so um they eventually had this giant struggle for survival as demons overran their world. And his brother, Tethesis, was possessed by a demon. Ooh, uh, that's Azerman nice. forcing to kill him. Oh, that's that that must have sucked. That's no good. So that's eventually tragic. Azerman was able to or I'm just gonna call him Azerman now. No more of this Iliathin thing. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um he managed to find this little shelter at this way, way old temple that the uh, demons would not approach because of the presence of the dying Eldar gods could still kind of be felt there. Because Slash ate most of the gods, but, um, you know, there's a little bit there going on. A little essence left, a little sprinkle of Eldar gods still left. So Azerman lived alone in that temple for many years and fell into a pretty hefty depression. Shocking. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, shocking. Very um, surprising. And uh, at one point, uh, contemplated and, I believe, attempted suicide. Ooh. Um, That's, well, but, I mean, considering everything that happened, I can't say as I blames him for falling into a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you know, take the, yeah. the nuclear war analogy, all your friends and family have died. and Yeah, and there's no coming back, and uh, your home is a wasteland, and yeah, that's tough. So, uh, eventually, though, however, he was swayed against it by this sort of feral Eldar girl named Ferethrethel, uh... <laughs> F-A-R-A-E-T-H-I-L. Uh, -E Ferethil? Ferethil? Ferethil sounds cool anyway, so I'd, I'd go with Ferethil. Ethel. The old, like, old <laughs> lady. Ethel. Ethel. She was knitting. In a Damn straight. <laughs> kind of uh, swayed him off of it for a bit. Um, originally, he kind of shunned the girl. She was weird. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, later down the uh, line, found the girl actually being chased by the hedonistic part of the survivors, which were now being called the Drukhari. Ah, so okay. uh, he ended up saving her from these Drukhari and renamed himself to Azerman uh, after the god 
hell's our names? As Asurian? Azrian? Azrian. Sure. sure. Azrian? As yeah, sure. Azrian. Um they're Azrian is a, the Phoenix King, or also known as Father of the Eldar, considered the most powerful of all the Eldar gods, and basically the psychic might of the universe. Wow, uh, that's a that's a good namesake to have. Definitely, if you're going to rename yourself after one of the gods, that's that's the one. Uh, Azrian apparently, though, was eaten by Slanesh, as were many of the Eldar gods, uh, with the exception, I believe, of Cain. Um, so Azerman, I believe, is supposed to be dead, 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 uh, as many of the gods were were destroyed and killed. Um, That's unfortunate. But Azerman itself feels li like, or er, yeah, Azerman feels like Azrien. <sighs> oh boy, <sighs> this is this is a mouthful. That's a, that's all. Azerman feels like Azerien. So as so they're both A S U R. Azur, Azure, whatever. Uh -huh. And he is men. And then there's Yan, Y A N. So one is Azure, men, him. And then the god is Azure, Yen, them. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I know, I know. It's fine. Uh -huh. It's it's whatever. He named himself basically. One is the basically, dude, one is the god. Yeah, yes. Yeah. He named himself in, in the name of the god, of the yes, god, basically. The most powerful god that got eaten by Slanesh. Yes. yes. Um, and That's he his took. Namesake. He took that young girl as a disciple, and they left the ruins of the world behind, gathering a few more uh, like-minded survivors. And they went, and his followers, which uh, were the young girl, um, Fugin, our fire boy, uh, Baharoth, the winged one, and uh, Arha, uh, <laughs> were all established this brand new world that they named Azure, A-S-U-R, because there wasn't enough Azure yet. Oh yeah, we got Azur Min, Azur Yin, Azur. What's what's the planet? What's what's there? Azure, what Azure, just Azure. Okay. Yeah, just the first four letters. Oh, uh, please uh, tell me they rename their people to the Azurians. That oh, you're Azure so close. With they, Azur they, Min and Azur Yin. You're so close. Uh, they called themselves the Azur Ya. So oh it, damn it! I was so close. <laughs> so it's literally the god's name, but without the N. Damn. The Azuria, the children of Azure. Oh man, they they did did GW just run out of original names and they were just like uh Azur Min, Azur Ya, Azur Yin, like what what is the what's the deal with this? Don't forget that the uh that the Eldar are also no named known as the Azur Yani, if you remember oh, us saying right, that. Oh, that's right, the Azur Yani. Which oh, is no. Azur Yin with an i at the end of it. <sighs> What? Why? I mean, I guess it's that's that's a very important god to them, right? The super, the, the, you know, it's, I get it, but damn, come up with a different name. Yeah, there's a lot of Azure. Oh, yeah, it's a, a lot. lot. That's so much. That's boy, this is gonna be very confusing. It's uh, it's. I mean, I'm not gonna really mention much of it anymore. Luckily, okay. Um, so it's not too bad. But basically, Azur Min, the guy, the guy, still kind of feels when he does his meditation, the like the the will of Azur Yan, which is either one of two things, because he's very much dead, eaten by Slanesh. Mm -hmm. So it's one, there's a little remnant of him still around, or two, he just played this like uber like 12d chess game and kind of set guidelines out for all of his followers post eldar destruction i mean making sure that you have like um a backup emergency plan in case the worst of the worst happens that's a pretty good idea make sure that your followings and your teachings always survive eh, you know that's yeah i buy that I buy that for a dollar. Powerful Azure. Uh, oh no, what's the god again? Azure Yan, whatever. That yeah, oh, you got the, it. The Azure Yan, yeah. Okay, I wasn't you sure if that was the people, the guy, the guy's armor, the planet, or the. Uh. No, no, you got it right. Azure Ya is yes. Yan is the god. Uh, the yes. people are the Azure Ya, and the uh, aspect warriors are the Azure Yani. That's so stupid. 
It's, just, it's not great. No, it's fine. Uh, anyway, he went and formed this temple, and these were the first ever Phoenix Lord based temples, the first ever Aspect Warrior temples, and uh, following the path of the warrior to protect them all from the Chaos Gods of Slanesh, the great enemy. Yep, make sure um, their souls don't get eaten. And so uh, Azurman runs the Dire Avengers one, which I've mentioned before. But he also has a special blade. Uh, this blade is known as the, oh, I had it right here. Hold on. Uh, it is known as the Sword of Azure. Oh, for uh, God's sakes. <laughs> um, but uh, it actually contains the soul of his once dead brother. Oh. Um, to allow uh, them to murder the absolute hell out of all the demons. That's a very 40k Eldar thing to do. Is like, oh yeah, I've I have the soul of my dead kin, and now I'm going to use it to strike holy vengeance. Because their uh, knights, wraiths, whatever work like that too, where you gotta have like the the soul stone of a dead family member, brother, sibling, something, something to pilot it. And I think that's really kind of messed up, but kind of dope too. So that's a very Eldar thing to do. Yeah. I think it's siblings for certain wraiths, yes. Mm. Uh, but, uh, yes, his sword is uh, really, really strong. I believe it has this, a similar effect that the sword of the emperor has, which is like, whoa, it can permanently kill demons. Like, Oh, that's important. They do not come back kind of thing. Okay. Um, so I, it is a very, very strong sword. And uh, also in-game, it, it hits... It hits. Yeah, I would imagine hard. that Chaos is very afraid of him. Uh, he's, he's a pretty spooky guy. Yeah, if you're a Chaos demon that's like, oh, yeah, he's he's the permadeath guy, and we don't go just screaming back to the void, uh, if I was Chaos, I would give him a very wide berth. Yes, I would... Uh, I would... The fact that you don't get your revive is, is definitely something pretty nasty. Yeah. So his sword, the sword of Azure, wielded by Azurmin, the hand of Azur Yanni on the planet of Azur, uh, and his people Azur Yah, and the temple of Azur Yanni. Uh, uh, Az ah! Yes, he's very <laughs> strong. <laughs> Their favorite color is Azure. They all wear blue. Is that? The, uh, does he, oh, shit. Does he wear blue? Oh, he does wear blue. He does wear blue. He does wear blue. <laughs> He's clad in azure. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. Anywho, moving on. Mm -hmm. um, so, there was the second Phoenix Lord, Jane Czar. Ah, our howling banshee waifu. The Storm of Silence. Mm. Um, she was, at the way back time, uh, an orphan, given or sold by her parents uh, into this place known as the Blood Dances, which was a pre-Eldar hedonistic uh, area of the Drukhari witch cult arenas, basically. Oh, no. Her parents sold her to a Drukhari thing called the Blood Dance? So this is before Drukhari existed. This was just the hedonistic, awful Eldar oh, prior okay. to the fall that kind of led to the fall. There's still, it's still a really awful place for you to sell a child, though. That's, yes. Mm, so that's she was kind of raised up during the beginning of the fall, uh, and she fought there in the basically the witch cult arenas, basically because the yeah. witch cults have like gladiatorial pits. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, despite the fall of the Eldar killing so many people, it still continued to function just at a very small capacity. <laughs> there were very few people there, but she was a top level one. I believe that she was a uh, Hecatit blood bride, Hecatari blood bride. She's like the really good witches. Wow. That's um, a hell of a name. Hecatari blood brides. Yeah, it's really yeah, cool. Blood brides is like, wow. Okay. Um, eventually, she in the Gladiator Arena was, killed a group of completely untrained Eldar slaves and was kind of like, you know, fuck this. <laughs> you know, this is kind of messed up. I don't, I don't like killing untrained slaves. This is bad. Yeah, like, I don't really want to do this anymore. And so uh, she w eventually made her escape. And was being chased down by Drukhari when a certain 
Azure Man saved her. <laughs> the Azure Man? The Azure Man. So the young girl that stopped him from suicide was actually a young Jane Czar. And, oh, that was her. And okay. the girl that he saved being a- attacked by the Drukari was actually her making her escape from them. Oh, cool. It well, all, good it for all, Jane Czar. It all comes together, you know? Nice. Just so, don't go after the Night Lords. Well, she did kill a lot of them. She did, but... Maybe in hindsight. Oh, they got her. They got her armor back anyway. So whatever. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but yes, so Jane Czar was the one of the first aspect warrior, or um, well, I guess technically first aspect warrior, but one of the first Phoenix Lords to join Azurman, uh to go ahead and help find these temples because she was saved by him uh, from the Jukari and kind of kind of gave him purpose yeah. again in life. You know, after the. Uh, death of his brother and destruction of oh I don't know his whole race. <laughs> Everything he knew and loved is dead. Quite yeah. the um, quite the the conundrum one might say. Man, ever since we were like, yeah, he's clad in azure. All I can hear when we say his name is he's the azure man. He's the azure man. Azure man. He's clad in azure man. All right, no, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> Me either. It's too much Azure. Too much Azure. Too much blue. Ted, make the thumbnail just the color Azure. Just it's 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 just a block of Azure. It's just it's just a big wallpaper of just the color blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. So uh, Jane Czar, of course, is uh, the leader of the Howling Banshees. Mm-hmm. She uh, the Aspect Warrior Shrine uh, for. The uh, well, her name in low gothic it was the Storm of Silence. Is the Jane Czar is kind of translated to. Ooh, that's cool. I like that. It's a fun one. She yeah. she was the first to ever master the psychic scream that is mm-hmm. known by the Howling Banshees. That's super debilitating. Yep. Um, she has her long pole arm and her cool triple spinny blade, the Silent Death, and the um. Okay, well, the, technically it's called the Janus Moore. And the Jai Moren, which is the pole arm, the blade of destruction. Mm. Uh, it was a she is uh, very cool. It was a very potent blade that actually survived during the time of the fall. I would not be surprised if that pole arm was a weapon she used in the witch pits. The yeah. Oh, the witch pits, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they definitely used it in the book. Definitely in the book too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, in the witch pits, certainly possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna get a problem with saying the words witch pits. Witch pits. Which which is with their pits. There's there's someone out there with the fetish that's witch pits. Witch pits. Yeah. Specifically like like not like even these kinds of witches, like the old like the old school, like <laughs> witches with the big yeah, nose. Probably. And, the and they warts. and and anybody that's into witch pits is already is probably also into Grand Blue Fantasy. You won't get that reference because it's an anime mobile gotcha game, but I'm sure there are people in the chat that get it. I think those three words you just said, anime mobile gotcha game, are like cursed runes, and you've like un- <laughs> unleashed some kind of demon. With like especially three... for for you, especially, it's like it's horrible gotcha, it's anime, and it's mobile. Oof. Yeah, I really don't know if if you could have used worse words. <laughs> I'm proud of you. The, it's, oh, I was uh, yeah 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 yeah. I was about to say a spell, but I was like, no, that franchise is cursed. And I don't want to talk about it. A, a spell. Are you, are you, you bring, all right, screw it. So, um, Jane Czar, <laughs> of course, uh, is talked about quite often. Um, there is a book of Jane Czar that is, talks a lot about the accompaniment of her and uh, Azurman. It's kind of like just them going through the processes, founding the new area, founding the new temple mm-hmm. and all that. Um, while she might not be the OG as Azerman, she's basically like his second. Yeah, she was like the second Phoenix Lord to ever uh, exist. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Um, along with the other groups he went along with, uh, there was also Ahra. Uh, Ahra, we talked a bit about in the Aspect Warrior episode, and this is the one that had was originally the Phoenix Lord of the Striking Scorpions. The ones that look like Predator. Oh, is he the one that uh, goes to Chaos? N- not or goes quite. to the Drukari? Yeah, he has like a path of destruction, kind of. Yeah. And he, he basically goes just mad. And 
I believe kills a lot of his temple. Um, but him and the current Phoenix Lord, Karandras, um, Karandras, they had like, I think they had like a 17 day duel. Some Whoa. like absolute <laughs> anime bullshit. Like, like 17 days of fighting or some crap. Um, and eventually, uh, Ahra was, was banished, gone mad, went crazy, and, and, and uh, left. Um, which we believe, it, it is theorized that he is Drizar now. Um, I don't know if that's technically 100% confirmed, but it is uh, highly alluded to that mm. he was the one who went downhill into Drizar. I was going to say, if you wanted that to be a real anime fight, it would be the opposite, where it would be like 17 episodes, but the fight lasted five minutes. That, that is, would be anime. That is also true. Yeah. That 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 also... What, what's the um, the Rock Leaf Gara fight? I was thinking more um, uh, Goku versus Frieza, when uh, Namek was set to explode in... I think it was five minutes, and their fight lasts like 20 episodes. Oh, good lord. Yeah, it's a doozy. Actually, the Gara Rock Lee fight wasn't that long. It was like two episodes. I only saw the first season of Naruto. That's the, that's after the first season? I think so. Oh, wow. Because, I... like, my, my favorite character was Zabuza, and I was like, oh, yeah, he's so cool, and Haku is so cool, and uh, I'm sure they're just going to be converted, and they're going to become... T- oh, they're dead. And then I was like, well, I don't care anymore. Yeah, so um yeah, so I'm I'm actually kind of surprised I watched as much Naruto as I did as a kid, but uh Me um, too, cuz that's so shown in anime trope that I was like, "Brick you." I I, I was 11. I was 11. Oh, okay. Well, okay, gotcha. It was it was very long ago. Anyway, mm. um the hell is I talking about? Karandros. <laughs> uh so yes, Karandros basically has sworn to kill Ahra and maybe now Drizar. Uh, and even their their weapon's name is literally called Ahra's Bane. <laughs> they literally named their weapon after the guy they hate so much. <laughs> I like it. That's that's a level of petty I can get behind. It's pretty petty. I won't yeah. lie. <laughs> I can get behind that. I'm here for it. I respect it. I, I mean, like, I get it. You know, like, I, I get it. But mm-hmm. damn. Yeah, I get it. I respect it. Firm handshakes all around. Firm handshakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yes, Ars Bane is the, the fancy-pantsy uh, weapon that they use. Karandros is kind of an interesting one. They're, they're a little bit, uh, due to this kind of uptaking of the guard, retaking of the new guard, um, they're a little bit, like, juvenile at times. Um, kind of in the idea that they're, like, they hide a lot or, like, maybe overly apologize when they make mistakes. Kind of just... Oh. They don't, it, not like they're actually children or anything, but they do, they just are a little bit uh, more, I don't know, emotional in that way. Mm, maybe a little naive. A little, maybe a little naive, you yeah. know. Um, a little more, I would call them more human, but you know, yeah. you know, you know what I mean. Um, for an Eldar, that is, yeah. yeah. For, he's uh, he's very nomadic, however, um, kind of just showing, like traveling the galaxy randomly uh, and around, and just kind of showing up. And kills whatever he wants, and then just kind of leaves again, which is very predator, you know. Shows up, kills everything, leaves. Yeah, extremely Giga Chad meme. Very based. Um, yeah, Karan Joseph just kind of kind of pops his way around places and okay. does the murder. <laughs> just a nomadic murder hobo. You know, I mean, you know, a lot of Eldar could be argued as nomadic murder hobos. Is that not what like samurai were? Nomadic murder hope. Well, no, they were nomadic hobo, ho- murder mercenaries, not hobos. Well, I, I would say that's probably a Ronin, right? Because samurai oh, yeah. are, are servants to the emperor or whatever, so they would they they would murder in the name of their lord. But uh, yeah, Ronin are nomadic murder hobos for sure. I was gonna say not this emperor. <laughs> no, no, not the not Biggie, <laughs> feudal Japan emperor. So. Uh, past that, we also have Malgan Ra. Mm, um, the boy. The boy. Now, unfortunately, Malgan Ra doesn't have as much as you'd like. Uh, honestly, yeah. Karandros and onward, the rest of the Phoenix Lords are a little uh, a little light mm-hmm. on details, um, which is unfortunate. It. It's really Azerman and Jane Zar take up a good chunk of the uh, of the overall Phoenix Lord lore. Yeah, um, that makes sense. 
I just like, like Malgan Ross so much because he's like so edgy, and he was one of the first minis I considered painting, and I just saw that he has quite a kill list. Like I, I remember looking, glancing at the wiki, and it's like, oh yeah, he's killed, and it's like four pages of like notable kills or something. Uh, he does have a lot. Um, because yeah. because Malgan Raw, if I mentioned last time, he was uh, one of the craft worlds that survived the fall of the Eldar, but it got caught in the Eye of Terror's gravity and kind of just got grabbed and pulled into the fucking warp. Yeah. And he was the only one to survive. Um, so when Azramim uh, trained him and kind of like brought him along, he was the the by far the, the weirdest. So <laughs> honestly, the Phoenix Lords, I, I genuinely look as like a goddamn anime, har uh, not harem, but like, <laughs> like, like a group. So you have the main character, which is Azramim, you have the love interest, uh, strong girl one, which is Jane Czar. And then you have their various sidekicks, right? <laughs> and mm -hmm. so Karandros is the young kind of juvenile-ish one. Malgan Ra is the edgelord. Ah, uh, okay. So they're an, an they're an anime pack. They're a shonen anime pack. They're a they, battle trope. They are honestly a shonen anime pack because Malgan Ra is... The, the edgelord, he st was the furthest away from all the other members of the Phoenix Lords. He fashioned these weird occultic weapons. Uh, <laughs> wasn't Didn't like having big blades and fancy swords like his brothers. He decided, like, you know what? I'm going to wield a giant gun and and use it like a, like a scalpel. Yeah, a scythe sniper. A, literally a, the, the Malgatar. Loosely translated to the word harvester. Oh man, he's so edgy. He's and he so looks edgy. like the Grim Reaper. Oh, what an edge lord. It is a, a shuriken cannon fitted with a power weapon co to combine together, which is why the Dark Reapers, his aspect group, fire like long ranged weapons and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Kind of goes along with him. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, there is a little bit of a, I'm not 100% on this, but I, I like to mention it because it's interesting. The idea that during the war in heaven, the Eldar god Cain helped smash the Nightbringer. And oh. one of the shards, the Nightbringer, is kind of the reason why Malgan Ra looks the way he does. Kind of oh. a influence of a shard. Because that makes sense. The Nightbringer like, basically is the Grim Reaper. Uh, and he kind of, and Malgan Ra is also the Grim Reaper, but in oh. his own weird way. So he was so affected by the shard that it sort of like affected his whole being and what he wanted to be. I'm not, I'm not too, too sure on the whole thing, but I know that's like uh, either a theory the or a discussion. Theory. Thanks for watching. <laughs> the g -g 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 game theory. In this episode of Game Theory, we're going to see how far can you run before I get you. Oh, no. I hope pretty far. Anyway, um, so he, the thing about Malgan Ron, the one thing that is often talked about when it comes to him is that he um, single-handedly fought off a Tyranid High Fleet. Whoa! Oh, that's right. I vaguely remember somebody telling me that, whether it was you in that last episode or... A random chat thing on one of our streams or whatever, but yeah, I I heard that. Yes, he uh, during wow. one of the high fleets, a uh, well, not a high fleet, a swarm, a swarm from a high fleet Leviathan uh, came against him, and he was able to come to the defense of the Eldar and single handedly stop the the swarm. I don't know how. The wiki does not really give me a whole lot with it, <laughs> but he, I guess, he did it. That's, I don't know how. That's a feet and a half. Cause I, it's it's a too much of, of a feat. It's that's too a lot much. Of, that's that, and that's not only just little bitty bugs like little. That's like the the big monster mash guys too, like the big wormy tearing it, spewing out the belly and. Uh, Turvagon. And what, yeah, term whatever, and that and and Malgan Ra just killed all of them. I like big boys, little bitty boys, <laughs> inner city boys, inner city tarragons. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, I That's don't, crazy. I don't know, I, I don't know about this story myself. Uh, I'm hoping that it's, I mean, it's not like he just shot them all to death, you know. Like, I'm, I'm sure there's got to be more to it. Like, he detonated something and or released mm. some kind of powerful super weapon that helped destroy the Tyranids. Like, I can understand the single handedly thing and the idea that he was able to, like, like a Mission Impossible kind of deal where they were. He, by being smart and strong, was able to avert the fleet in some way. But it's oh, not like yeah. he stood on the top of a ship and just shot at them the whole time. <laughs> he, was, he was just sniping all over the place. Yeah, Pro probably more of like a 300 scenario where like he used strategy and maybe the terrain and some carefully planted explosives. And he forced them into like a, a, a narrow passage where he could deal with them and all that stuff. But yeah. It's, or maybe it, he just scythed them all to death, and he's just a badass. You know? No, I, I don't I don't think he scythed them all to death. Yeah, he was just going through it like they were just a wheat crop, you know? Just whack. He's not Mortarian. <laughs> he should be. So, besides that, there was also a little bit of stuff he did during the 13th Black Crusade. Uh, Fall Katie, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And uh, he basically came to the aid of Ulthway and... During the part where all of the Eye of Terror just started throwing out legions of chaos, he, they left this kind of big lesion between the warp, and he kind of took this chance and jumped into the warp to search for the remnants of his lost craft world. Oh, I mean, um, that uh, <laughs> for an Eldar to just willingly jump into the warp like that, just unprotected, is that's no, that's he didn't, a move? no, he didn't like cannonball into the thing, <laughs> he had a ship. <laughs> I'm positive. Okay. When you said he jumped in, that's what I thought. Not I was just like physically. He just sees like a way, and he's like, "I'm going." But like you know, like how Drax just jumped into the maw of that monster in the oh beginning of Guardians God. 2. That was what my head was like. Instead of the monster maw, he's just like, "Oh, is that a portal to the warp?" Just like you, you think he's like in the warp, <laughs> just unshielded. Like, like in the He's tides, the warp. floating around, you, like you slashing saw what, at the warp. You saw what happened to the, like the dudes on the outside of the Night Lord's that's, vessel, and you think he's just true. he's just doing breaststroke. He's just <laughs> yeah. like, like, whew, I'm out of shape. Yeah, he's just he's just kind of floating around, doing the breaststroke through the warp. Every now and then, a demon comes around. He just does a big, wide arcing slash with his scythe, and you know it's, it's Malgan Rai. He can handle it, you know. God, God. <laughs> what? It's, it's a funny picture. It is a funny to, to picture. To imagine that, all right? That's anyway, what I thought, all right? He, he said found, he jumped in. He found his craft world. Oh, shit. He actually found it? Yes. Oh. And, wow. uh, and but they're a little weird. Oh, I imagine so. They've been in the warp all this time. They uh, They will literally never remove their helms. Uh -oh. Ever and they speak in only weird whispers. Oh, that's no good. That's that's bad. Is that like a they won't remove their helmet because um? Have you seen the Admech meme? Oh, because their eyes are like ripped open. Yeah, it's like we'll leave. That we'll, on. we'll we'll leave that on. We'll leave that on. We don't know why. There's a question okay. of like why why um are they seemingly untouched by chaos after being in the warp for 10,000 years oh i bet it's not good yeah we don't we don't reason. we don't know so there's I questions bad. i bet it's real bad so that's kind of malgan raj stick okay. uh we also have baharoth Mm -hmm. Baharoth is the the wind guy, the the swooping hawks. Mm, they're very cool. I like them a lot too. Baharoth and Malgan Ra are actually like best buds. Oh, really? They're, yep, they're like really close friends, kind of brothers almost. They have this idea of like the sun to the moon. You know that meme of the really goth girl and the girl with the bright rainbow hair taking a selfie together? Oh, yeah, yeah, like that uh, Wednesday Netflix show where she's best friends with the real, like, oh, I'm so chipper and rainbowy and, yeah. Sure. Uh, Baharoth is the chipper rainbowy one. Mm. <laughs> Baharoth is very youthful. I think they're actually the youngest. Um, I okay. might be uh, wrong on that one, but. I'm, um, I'm assuming by Eldar standards, the youngest means that, like, oh, he's only a thousand years old. Actually, they might not be the, the youngest, actually. I don't know how, I don't know how young Baharoth is, but. Pretty um, ba Baharoth is very youthful. 
Mm. Very much like the wind on my face uh, and the, the, the soaring of, well, you know, the swooping hawk. Like, Baharoth yeah. is literally the the savior kind of Eldar, where in the middle of a fight, you know, you'll see him silhouetted flying in the air behind the sun, and a big screech will occur, and then he'll f- just, like, fly down and just hose you with weapons. That sounds and, very cool, though. Very heroic. Very, yeah, I, I like that. He's walking ex- on sunshine. Whoa, whoa. Hey! And don't it feel good? And there, it's the, speaks in this, like, whispery vibe, but, you know, the cry of the wind is Baharoth. Ooh, very um, cool. Literally just, apparently Baharoth is known to be the fastest Eldar to have ever lived. Wow. Which, when you think of how fast Eldar are, he must be moving. I was going to say, is that like flash levels where if like he swoops past you, your flesh just rips off and you just like in the boys when uh, like an ace train. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when he's all like roided up and it's just boom, and he runs through that poor girl. I don't know if he's that fast, but I mean, th- I mean, maybe it's 40k for God's it's, sakes. Yeah, it's 40k Eldar. He might be that fast. It, it certainly is possible. Uh, Baharoth just like swoops down the ground, and the ground just like turns into white fire. Like uh, the guy oh. is, is, the guy is at just like a, a huge. He's 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 a he's a damn like eagle. He's like Celestine almost. We're like think of this mm-hmm. radiant winged figure uh, lit by the sun, and then just swoops down and murders everything. Man, I'm starting to really like Baharoth. Baharoth is also the the most infuriating character in the entire goddamn Eldar Codex. <laughs> I hate him. I hate him. I hate him so much. It seems like you have a big problem with anything Eldar that flies. Oh Whether it's God. their planes, Baharoth. It seems ba- like flying Eldar are a big problem for you on the tabletop. Baharoth has this ability where basically after he flies and shoots you and then stabs you, before you can stab him back, he can move anywhere on the battlefield. Oh. So he's just like... Zoom, slice, gone. Just gone. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh, cool. I don't get to hit him back, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and he's too far away now. I got to take a turn to try and get up to him or something. He's like behind cover, so I can't even shoot him. Oh, he's such. Man. He's so infuriating. I got. There must be a ton of Eldar players that use him because that sounds disgustingly busted. I think if an Eldar player could take three, they would. <laughs> I think Baharoth got like two nerfs. Yeah. Yeah, Baharoth is something else. I, I totally understand why people would call for a nerf and why GW would give a nerf to that too. So. He still could do his thing, but he's just like, you know, he, he's just he, more expensive. He sounds so cool though. Baharoth is fun. And it's it's fun the dynamic between him and Malgan Ra, how they're like best buds, and yet mm. he's the he's the the youthful lithe wind on my face when a Malgan Ra is is Malgan Ra. Yeah, the sun, the sun and the moon, like you said. Could you? You can't run Malgan Ra and Baharoth. Oh yeah, you can run as many aspect warriors as you like. I think. Oh, so uh, you you could run the best buds, the best friends unit. Pretty, I'm pretty sure if you had the sl- no, you can only ha- have four HQs. It, it it comes down to the amount of like slots you have because you can only take so many um slots of a certain battlefield role, and they're all oh, like, yeah yeah HQs. So um, the problem is that, like, okay, I, it would be great if I took, like, I, I, I'll i run Azraman, Jane, Zar, Baharoth, and Fugin. Like, I can do that. Um, but then you have, like, no Psykers in your Eldar. Oh, that's that, that's a problem. Yeah. I that'd like, be a problem, yeah. Could really run some Farseers, maybe. Yeah. Or, or, like, some Warlocks, you know, or, like, Eldred or whatever. Yeah, but but you could run Baharoth and Malgan Ra and then do Psyker nonsense with the other HQs or something. Totally. If you want to have the dynamic duo, be my guest. You can run Azraman and, and uh, Jane Zar if you'd like. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. I, 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 w- I would run Baharoth and Malgan Ra, at least. And That'd I be might fine. lose every match, but I, I got to have the best bud squad. The sun I, and the moon. I wouldn't say so. Um, I mean, striking or howling banshee. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Um, mm-hmm. What the hell are the names? Swooping hawks. 
Swooping Hawks are Baharoth's aspect, and they're still, I mean, they got nerfed multiple times, but they're still perfectly fine uh, and cool. very strong and hurt really bad. Uh, and then you'll have like, I know, I know Malgonra's Dark Reapers are not that good. They're yeah. kind of, they're kind of meh. Uh, but honestly, though, like they, they have, you know, you could, you could find, you could find your way. Hmm. Or so, maybe I'll just, I'll just custom, uh, I'll get someone to paint Baharoth and Malgan Ron. I'll just display them because they're cool together. Mm, Baharoth's mini, though. Oh no! Have you shown me Baharoth's mini? I have. Oh, and I didn't like it, did I? Well, I, I mean, here it is. It's, it's, it's not, it's not good. Oh, uh, well, it's... I, I don't hate that, actually. It it obviously looks a bit older, but for an older mini, that's okay. I don't I don't hate that. Okay, it, it, could, it could be worse, sure, but um, compared to, like, yeah. the updated version of Malgan Ra... <laughs> yes, it does look like a little baby toy next to new Malgan Ra. That is fair, but for an older model, that's still serviceable, I think. All right, I, I hate it. But, you know, to each their own. <laughs> okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, lastly, really, the, the really the last one, I mean, there's a couple others. There's, like, Irithyll, which is the Shadow Spectres one that kind of, um, that's, like, doesn't really get a whole lot of support. And there's also, like, Dristanta, which is the Shining Spears that also really doesn't have much lore. Mm. Um, but the last, like, major one would be Fugin. Um, oh yeah, the one with the really unfortunate mini, despite him being so cool. Yeah, the burning lance, oh, uh, man. fire dragon man. Please update his mini. Please update his mini. That thing is so bad. Oh my god. So Fugim uh, is a is an interesting guy where he's just all about like pure murder, right? Like. Uh, you, if, if Fugin looks at you, like you're, you're, you begin to smoke, you know, Ooh. that kind of thing. Like he, okay. he is just and that both like maybe a literal, but also like a metaphorical kind of thing. The mm. idea is that his gaze is flame, the smoke rising from the blistered skin of those who do not address him with proper respect. Dang. And, and you know, he's all about con- pure, complete destruction. The absolute uh, craft of a- annihilation, like until unto ash, to shreds, you say. To shreds, to ash. I mean, if he's all about complete destruction, then fire being his element is just cleansing fire until it is ash, until even bone is dust. It is literally sense. purely death. Every yeah. bit of you is reduced to ashes on wind. Um, and the interesting thing about Fugin, despite him not really having a ton of lore, is he's got this neat concept about the chain. And it's the idea that as he destroys demons, among other useful enemies, he's crafting himself a chain. Um, this chain might not necessarily be literal. It could be metaphorical, but it could be literal in its own way. Uh, but the idea of this chain is that it is meant to bind the flaming dragon that he is represents, the Eldar's like greatest dragon, and kind of use it to, for lack of a better term, sick it on chaos. Oh, okay. So he's making a metaphorical chain for, wait, himself? Uh, a metaphorical what? chain to, uh, rope the dragon that he is like based off of represents. And you and like oh, okay. the Eldar dragon of fire or whatever, and sick it on chaos. Okay, so he is actually looking to chain a literal dragon that he represents, or or metaphorically chaining a dragon to sick it on the chaos gods. Right. Okay. One could argue that the chain is simply his uh, martial prowess. And he oh, is the okay. dragon. It's it's a it's a lot of metaphorical woo woo shit that the Eldar are doing. So it's kind of like he is honing his killing potential the way you would temper a chain, and with each new link, he gets a little stronger, and until he can fully tame the beast that is his full potential type of shtick. 
well, that would be one interpretation of it. There is absolutely okay. an interpretation that it is a literal chain. He is literally going to get a dragon and send it. Man, if he gets an updated mini where a cool version of him is riding a dope-ass fire dragon, I am here for it, and I will pay as much money as it takes to get it. The the, the chain thing is is kind of like, it could be literal, it could be metaphorical. I'm assuming it's metaphorical, but I think it's up to interpretation at the moment. I will say it again. I hope it's literal because... It you was, want it on a dragon? I want him on a flaming, crazy, alien fire dragon. Yes. Fugin is a is a very interesting guy. He he hits he hits real hard. Like, he hits real hard. Just a real um, shame about that mini. Real shame about that damn mini. <laughs> it's a real shame. Although, I guess he probably... If this was Age of Sigmar, he'd get a mini where he's riding a literal flame dragon. But since it's 40k, they don't really do that. They don't do much dragon, no. Yeah, There's a couple, yeah. like, things. There's a between. void dragon, but he's not really a dragon dragon. No, that that is, that is there's absolutely not that. Very cool dragon. mini, though. Holy shit. Um, but... Fugin's idea, though, and, it, and this kind of goes along with all the other Phoenix Lords is that there is an event called Rana Dandra. And Rana Dandra is the end of all days. And oh. it is a prophesized uh, and, and visions type thing of the legendary destruction of the entire Eldar species, as well as the forces of chaos simultaneously. Oh, so it's like Ragnarok. It is basically Ragnarok, but in, in with Ragnarok, they kill... I'm here to kill chaos. I'm here to kill chaos. They destroy chaos and themselves in mutually assured destruction. Oh, wow. That is basically Ragnarok. The idea is that all the Phoenix Lords die on this final battle. Um, okay. They the sacrifice themselves for the greater good. Basically. They're Tau. Baharoth will die, everyone will, will die, uh, but Fugin will be the last to fall. He will oh. be the final one uh, with this like last bur uh, burning bright in this battle before he will be the last one to be struck down. Ah, so he's Surtur in this Ragnarok metaphor. Little bit, which makes sense because he is Cause the fire. fire dragon. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yep. Uh, yeah. And so they're all a little bit like frightened about this whole final days. One could argue they're trying to get towards it with the whole Yanari thing. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would imagine it would be very scary, but at the same time, it's like, well, yeah, it sucks that we have to die, but at the same time, if it gets rid of chaos, that seems like a pretty decent sacrifice. If it gets rid of chaos, hundo, hundo percent. Yeah. And I'm sure the Imperium's like, hey, you guys need a hand with that? Like, we, we can't we get rid of the Eldar and Chaos? <laughs> Just let us know what we can do. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, well, I don't, know if, I don't know if the Imperium would like to be a lot more of a... Uh, oh, well, yeah, I guess they get rid of Eldar also. They get yeah, rid it's of like the we damn. get rid of the Eldar and Chaos? <laughs> guys, we're here. <laughs> we're ready to Sign volunteer whatever you up. need. Yes, USA, USA. USA, USA, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> so that's uh, that, that's really most of the the idea of the Phoenix Lords. The the Rana Dandra is the the final act of them. The the noble sacrifice of the Eldar race versus the mm -hmm. Chaos Gods. Azerman founded the temple uh, along with the young girl Jane Zar. And then you have your um, then you have your anime side characters. You have Edgy Malgan Ra, <laughs> juvenile uh, younger Karandros who has a grudge against his arch rival. You have Baharoth, which is the fun uh, hippie one. And then you've got Fugin, who is the really big buff one. Nice. It's it's Naruto. A little bit. It's Naruto. You got Sasuke with the edge. Hey, are, uh, you, are, are you Nor actually calling Azerman fucking Naruto? He, yeah, dude. He's Naruto. I, you know, I'm actually more offended by Jane Zar being Sakura. That That's more offensive to me. Oh, yeah. She would have to be Sakura, wouldn't she? And like... Like, and like, Jane Zar, dude. Oh, no. 
Never mind, it's not Naruto just because of that. We got to find a different anime reference because uh uh. Yeah, well, you get it's it's the group. It's the you yeah, get yeah, your yeah. group. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's Chainsaw the fun part. Chainsaw is of it. not Sakura. Mm -mm, Let's like not it. with that. Yeah. No way, Jose. Oof, do not make art of that, please. I'm actually a little surprised people don't use Azerman more often. I don't see him very often in lists, but he's actually really good. The sword with his brother in it hits like a truck. I'm just hmm. kind of surprised. Yeah, why don't people use it more? I don't know. Maybe because Dire Avengers are like not the greatest of the troops, and they're just a little bit mid, but they're but they're actually not. They hit pretty hard. I, hmm. I mean, even if they're mid and you have an HQ model that hits like a truck... That kind of turns a mid squad into a pretty decent squad, doesn't it? Well, it doesn't quite work that way. They're like separate. Oh, wow. Well. He, really, he doesn't really give them like a, a special. Oh, he doesn't give them any like special buff or anything. It's just kind of like they're there and he's there and they a don't little get any bit. special ties. Actually, so. Dire Avengers have some pretty good abilities. Wait, why don't they use Azerman more often? Maybe it's because why use Azerman when you would use instead, you would use Baharoth or. Mm. or yeah. Or Jane Czar, because Jane Czar also rips. <laughs> Just rips. rips. <laughs> so well, I guess I that mean, makes you sense. could use both. Well, like what 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 would your HQ models be if you were to say a, an Eldar player, right? Because you wouldn't apparently you wouldn't take all four of the aspect warriors, but like would you take two of them? Would you take just one of them because there are other areas that you feel are better? Like what? What's what's the what's the move? I'm I am not sure. I know a lot of people like to take Eldrad, which was the guy that Fulgrim spoke to. Oh um, right, right. But that's because he's like the Giga Psyker, ah, and that's and just Eldar's, makes, yeah, yeah, and Eldar's ha happy yeah. help you with that. Um, sure, sure. I don't really know. It'll probably just be Psyker stuff. It depends. Like Eldar are kind of expensive. Because they're so strong, they're just also very like squishy. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It, it doesn't. I'm not really sure. But if I if I were to make an Eldar army, I wouldn't. But if I were <laughs> to, it would probably be some kind of combo of like um, a Fugin and uh, and Azerman probably because I like Azerman and Fugin maybe maybe a little Jane Czar in there. But yeah, then I would start running low on on Psyker stuff. So I don't know. Fugin. 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 But then so you'd have cool. to run that mini and. Ugh. He, or Fugin, you just proxy him out, I guess. Yeah, but Fugin just like he he has like one shot. He has his good melee, but he has one shot with his giant gun. And there's a good <laughs> chance that, that shot just doesn't land. But if it does, oh my god. <laughs> Kill it, a Titan. Ri well, no, but it rips. Damn. Let it it's, rip. It's no towel rail gun. <laughs> it should be. All right. Beautiful. Lovely. Excellent. That's the episode. Shy yeah. is not here, so she can't stop us from being stu mm -mm. stupid. Nope. We have covered this aspect of the Eldar. Hell yeah. Next week, we're going to do some goddamn Angron. Oh, hell yeah. More of that uh, Arcs of Omen stuff. And I'm mad about it. What? Oh, well, because it's Angron. I get it. I see what you did there. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I cut it. Cut All it. right, yep, <laughs> goodbye.